Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to 2015's first episode of Fantasy Baseball. For some reason I arbitrarily picked first base as my first rankings just because it, it looked interesting to me. Miguel Cabrera, Jose Abreu, all these guys, first base, it's big power guys and there's not really a ton of them to rank. Well there are, were, there's like 20 something of them to rank but I felt like these were kind of somewhat of the easiest guys. So I put this into four different sections as you can see and I'll explain each section when we get to it But this first section these are the top ten guys These are the guys that you would like to target these are the guys that you're ideally gonna put at first base Even though Todd Frazier would make a fine third baseman. He'll also make an excellent first baseman And so we're gonna go into this so Miguel Cabrera. I have made projections for each of these these are my projections These are not ESPN any other website these are my projections. So Miguel Cabrera projecting him to hit 325 with 35 home runs, 105, 105 RBIs, one stolen base, and 102 runs. This is because he plays on a pretty good offensive team. There's a lot of guys that are going to hit behind him, so he's going to score a lot of runs. There's a lot of guys hitting in front of him, so he's going to hit a lot of RBIs. His power and his average should come back up. His average was at like 303 last season or something like that. And oh, everyone thought Miguel Cabrera is going to regress. He's regressing. He hit 20 home runs. Oh my god, he's regressing. Yeah, he's he was hurt a lot of last season. And so 325 average and 35 home runs is not ridiculous for Miguel Cabrera at first base for the Tigers. Next guy we're going to look at is Jose Abreu at the number 2 spot. Um I project him to hit 292, 34 home runs, 110 RBIs, 3 stolen bases and 100 runs. So I do project that his home runs will regress just a little bit and his batting average will regress about 10 points or so, only because with pitchers adjusting to him more and um, they'll figure out his tendencies. They'll be able to get him out a little bit more. However, he is hitting in a very good lineup, so those RBIs will increase. He could even have a three or a, a 120 RBI season. Jesus, what am I talking about? 300 RBIs? Jesus. No. He can have a 120 RBI season, maybe 125, because he's hitting with a very good lineup. He's got Melky Cabrera hitting in front of him now. And then here's where things start to get a little bit interesting. So... A lot of people would say number three is Paul Goldschmidt, and I'll get to why Paul Goldschmidt is not my number three guy. Besides the fact that I love Anthony Rizzo and that I'm a Cubs fan, I've got Anthony Rizzo ranked at number three. The, all the power numbers have gone up each and every year since his rookie year. His ISO has gone up, his home run to fly ball ratio has gone up, everything has just started to go up since that rookie campaign. And if you look, the, uh, the 2013, the down year where he hit like 280, he still hit a lot of home runs. But he hit 280, and the BABIP was down a lot from his career average between the two other seasons that he had. Well, the season and a half that he had. Uh, the BABIP was down. The BABIP was down, so his 280-something last year was, I think he had 282 last year, and it was on par exactly with what he had in his uh, half a rookie season. And the home run pace was just about the same, too. So him to hit 285 with 36 home runs isn't completely unreasonable. Now, the 90 RBI could go either way, because depending on how the rest of the Cubs lineup hits, he could have 90 RBI, he could have 70 RBI. It all depends on how the Cubs hit. The same with the runs. He could have 80 runs, he could have 30 runs. Not 30 runs, he could have 80 runs, he could have 60 runs. It all depends. And the four stolen bases I project him for, he could steal even more than that. You know, Joe Madden likes to run guys, he likes to run the bases, he likes to do different things. So, Edwin Encarnacion, him and... Uh, Anthony Rizzo, a kind of you can flip flop either of them for the three spot really, but I like Rizzo a little bit more in terms of the average. It's good for a rotisserie league, but it's also good for a head-to-head points league. His 272 average was just about every career year he's had 272 about 34 home runs. Obviously, he's like a model of consistency. 105 RBIs. The steals obviously for most of these guys are variable. 105 runs. He's playing in a very very good very good lineup with Josh Donaldson this year and Jose Bautista, so all this stuff is going to be pretty much accurate. Now, Paul Goldschmidt, number five. Why am I so low on Paul Goldschmidt? Sure, he was injured last season. He missed about half of last season due to injury. However, here's the thing. The first half where he was not injured, his career stats were looking like his 2012 season, in which he hit about 280 with only 20 home runs. It didn't look like the MVP season that he had in 2013, where he hit like 320 with 30 home runs. Or maybe it was like 303 with 20 home runs, 30 home runs. So to me right now, the outlier year is that MVP year. The power is something that 
is not he wasn't even close to on pace for 30 some 30 plus home runs last season he was on pace for like 20 plus home runs so Paul Goldschmidt I think is somewhat of a Joe Maurer type guy where he's gonna hit for average and he's gonna hit for some power but he's not the most powerful guy in the league there's definitely guys that are more powerful than him and because of that, I like Anthony Rizzo and Edwin Encarnacion more than him because they're going to hit for only about a 20 to 30 point lower batting average, but they're going to hit 10 to 10 to 12 more home runs. And the RBI potential is way down for Paul Goldschmidt this year. Just, I don't see them producing a lot of runs. Of course, it could go completely the opposite way. They could score a lot of runs, but stolen bases, he's going to have 10 stolen bases, so he's still got that appeal. Then we move to number six, Adrian Gonzalez, who are projected for a 292 average, 25 home runs, 105 RBI, one stolen base, 80 runs. Pretty self explanatory. Last few years, the average has been there. The power's been there since he's been with the Dodgers, so I think that's a pretty good projection for him. Now, Albert Pujols bouncing back from injury a couple years ago where he had a torn plantar fascia. And that really affects how you can hit and really affects the power. So last year was really what we're seeing from him last year. I don't think was an outlier year. I think at the age of 35, 36, whatever he's going to be this season, he can still hit 282, 26 bombs, 105 RBI, maybe even those four stolen bases and 80 runs. But I think that's a pretty solid projection for Albert Pools. Now the big man, Todd Frazier. You really probably want to play him at third base, but if you're taking him as a first baseman, number eight, that's still not bad. He's a guy that definitely has 30-plus homer potential. He has 20 steal potential. He can be a 20-30 guy, and he's going to hit for a decent average. League average average is a lot lower than that, and 274 is something you could definitely get away with at first base in a rotisserie league or in any league because really at first base you're looking for kind of a power guy, and I'll get into that later with some of these rankings. Then Prince Fielder, um, he was injured last year. The spinal injury, that's something that really affects the way that you hit, your neck injury. That's, that, yeah, that's pretty much why his stats were so low. So 283 with 30 home runs, even though I only projected him for 29, that's still not unreasonable for, for ugh, that's not unreasonable for Prince Fielder in his career at this point. He's still young enough. I think he's going to be like 30, 31 next season. He's still got the potential to hit a lot of home runs and hit for a decent average. Chris Davis, the guy that everyone wanted to draft first overall last year. Well, not really first, but like third overall, right behind Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera, and it burned everyone. Chris Davis just could not hit to save his life. The BABIP was so low last year, and I think the BABIP's going to come up. The, his luck has got to change at some point, and I think he's going to hit in the 270s, which is about where his career has been in the past few years. And those 30 home runs, I feel like he could easily hit 30 home runs because he's Chris Davis, and he's roided out of his mind, in my opinion. Now we go to my little tiers down here. So each of these is a different tier. This first tier is guys who are going to hit for moderate power and average. This middle tier here is guys that are going to hit for a, an acceptable average but a lot of power. And this tier here is guys who are going to hit for a decent average and some power. And I'm just saying some power is in like, in terms of position. Because 17 and 10 home runs, those are good. But at first base, there's guys with a lot more power. So this first year, he, first tier here, Joey Votto bouncing back from injury. He's always been a great hitter, and he's always hit for some power. So that 316 with 20 home runs is definitely attainable. The 60 RBIs is probably going to be one of the lowest for a first baseman because he's not hitting in a great lineup, and he's hitting number two in a lineup. And he's got Billy Hamilton ahead of him. Ahead of him. And if Billy Hamilton can ever get on base, then Joey Votto will get some RBI potentially. But Joey Votto is a guy who likes to take his walks, and he's hitting number two ideally in that lineup. So he's not going to get you a lot of RBI, but he is going to get a lot of runs because he's got Jay Bruce hitting behind him and a few other guys. So he should be able to score some runs this year. Now, Justin Morneau, some people want to hate on Justin Morneau. They're going to say Coors Field is the whole reason that he had last season. No, he was finally healthy last season. He had a concussion problem for years and years and years that affected the way he played. And last year, he really kind of cleared up that concussion problem. So Justin Morneau, expect him to hit around 300 like he did last year with 20 home runs at Coors Field is definitely something I feel he can do. Buster Posey is a guy who you're probably going to want to draft as a first baseman. Well, the reason I have Justin Morneau over Buster Posey and V Martin, guys like that, is Justin Morneau playing in Coors Field has the potential to hit more than 20 home runs. He has the potential to hit 30 home runs even. 
And if uh, Tulowitzki, Carlos Gonzalez, those guys can stay healthy, he has the potential for just huge RBI numbers, huge runs numbers, and everything. He could be a top five guy by the end of the year if everyone in Colorado stays healthy. Then we go to Buster Posey, who you're probably going to want to take as a catcher because he has a lot more value as a catcher than first baseman. But 301 average projection, it's about what he should do this year. 20 home runs, consistent. Yeah, that's all you got to say about Buster Posey. Freddie Freeman is a guy I'm down on. He'll be a lot of he'll be in a lot of rankings like top five, top ten guy, but I just don't see it this year. 286 average. He hasn't really hit for a lot of average. In a few years, he had one year where he hit like 30-something, but other than that, he's been hitting in like the 280s. 20 home runs isn't going to be bad, but just the RBI and the runs potential of that Braves lineup is something that really is discouraging. He's really the only big hitter they have there. The only other big name hitter that they have there right now, when that's, uh, you know, BJ Upton, that's not good. So Freddie Freeman really kind of fell this year in my rankings because he just doesn't have that same potential for RBIs and runs and everything, and yeah. So Vmart, a guy who hit 30 home runs last season, how could I have him this low? Because it was an outlier season, the ISO, the home run to fly ball ratio, all of his power stats were so inflated last season, it was ridiculous. I don't think that he's going to have a repeat. For like the past five years, he's hit around 16 home runs, and then he had that 30 home run season last season. I don't think the power is going to ensue, especially because he's like 36, 37. The average is going to stay there, and the RBIs are going to be there because he's hitting in a good lineup, but the power is just not going to be there, guys. Now, Adam LaRoche, the first of these, this tier of high power but low average guys who, I mean, you could swap either of these tiers. It really depends on your personal preference, and that's why I did this outside of the top 10. I think this was a good idea for me to do this because if you want those big power hitters, these are the guys you should target. If you want those average hitters who hit for some power, those are the guys you should target. Now, let's get into these rankings. Adam LaRoche, number one in my power but barely any average rankings outside of the top 10. This is pretty self-explanatory. He had a lot of home runs last season, and now he's moving to the U.S. Cellular, which is just amazing for left-handed bats. It has revived so many left-handed careers. Remember when Adam Dunn went there and people were questioning it, and he hit 30 home runs a year? Adam LaRoche is pretty much going to be the new Adam Dunn, just with less strikeouts and a little bit more average. And those RBIs, the RBI potential is so high this year. There's so many good players in that lineup. There's Alexi Ramirez, Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera, Adam Eaton, guys that get that God, God, I can't talk. Guys that are gonna get on base in front of Adam LaRoche, and he's gonna drive them in. Now our next guy, Mark Trumbo, who missed a lot of the season with a broken foot last year. And uh, the power projection, 32 home runs, 256 average. He's not going to hit for much average, but he's going to hit for power. He's been pretty consistent power hitter. And yeah, Carlos Santana is a guy who has first and third eligibility and probably DH eligibility in your league. And he may get catcher. Um, He may be catcher eligible at some point this season if he splits sometime with Jan Gomes behind the plate. But that's probably going to be a lot later in the season, so I wouldn't draft him banking on the fact that he may get catcher eligibility, because he's not catcher eligible this year, surprisingly, because he didn't play enough games. But 250 hitter with 24 home runs, a lot of people thought he was down, done last year, His, he was so down, the contact was so bad, the bad bit was terrible, he had like a 230 average, but he did hit like 30 home runs, which was amazing, and at catcher position that was very, very, very valuable, but at first base... That's not as valuable because you see all the guys that have ranked above him. Now, last resort guy, if you want a ton of power but barely any average, is Lucas Duda. The RBI potential obviously is not there too much in uh, in New York, but he's going to have 30 home runs at least. And this was with him splitting like two months with Ike Davis. He hit 30 home runs last year, so he could probably hit over 30 home runs. But I don't think he's even going to hit. He, uh, I don't think he's even going to touch 250 in terms of average. Now you've got your guys who are going to hit for average and minimal p positional power. My oh God, I can't talk. Matt Adams, not Mike Adams, is going to take the number one spot. He's going to hit 286 about this year. He could hit all the way up to 300 with 17 home runs. I have him ranked for 70 RBIs, but he could easily have more than 70 RBIs. And those 60 runs are going to be a decent projection for him. For him, sorry about that. I burped. But I only have him ranked the highest because he's got the most power potential out of all these guys. Then we go to Joe Maurer, who 
I think he's really lost all fantasy relevance at this point. He's going to hit for a high average, which is good in a roto league, but he's going to hit for almost no power, and the RBIs are just going to be terrible because Minnesota, I don't see their lineup coming together at this point unless Byron Buxton has an amazing spring, Miguel Sano has an amazing spring, and they're both in the majors to start the season. And then the last guy who I have any fantasy relevance of, or who I think has any fantasy relevance, is Eric Hosmer. 281 average, 12 home runs, 70 RBI, 55 runs. Those projections could easily go up. You've got no Billy Butler competing for him at first. No Billy Butler being, I want to play first some days. No, it's just all Eric Cosmer this year. He can do whatever he wants with it. He could run with it. He could probably hit 290 with 15 home runs, but I think this is a very solid projection for him. So, one last look at the ratings, guys, and so I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like rating. If you guys have some differences in opinion for me, leave a comment down below with what you guys think of my rankings. If you guys think I'm being fair to guys like Paul Goldschmidt, Todd Frazier, Albert Pujols, Prince Fielder, Justin Morneau. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to click that like button, as I already said, I think. Subscribe for more awesome Star Wars Battlefront videos and fantasy baseball videos and baseball franchises and everything. And I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.